In this chapter, we'll get into the VST instruments included with Cubase. First, we'll review the legacy instruments. Then, we'll look at the new instruments. You have two different ways to call up a VST instrument. You can create a new instrument track, or you can add it to the VST instrument rack. Open the rack by opening VST Instruments. Use the drop down to add your instruments. The output routing options available depends on how you have your audio interface configured. As soon as you add a VST instrument to the rack, Cubase automatically creates the appropriate folder and MIDI tracks. The primary advantage to using the VST rack is that it allows you to make more efficient use of the workstation instruments like Halley and Sonic SE. With Halley and Sonic installed in the rack, you can set it up with different voices and then route multiple MIDI tracks to it. If we set up the same number of voices using multiple instrument tracks, it would also have to include multiple instances of Halion Sonic SE, which would consume more CPU power. The first of the legacy instruments is Prolog, a basic, three oscillator subtractive synth. In the upper right corner is a control to set the maximum number of voices. And by the way, this drop down, which is available on all VST plugins, lets you switch to something called a generic editor in case lists are easier to work with than pictures. Cubase automatically loads up the basic quick controls for you. Like any subtractive synth, Prolog begins with an initial waveform, but there are some very exotic choices here, like formants and vocal modes. The filter and cutoff controls are nested on the center knob. Click on the Pi to pick a filter, and then twist the center to adjust the cutoff. You can use the buttons at the bottom to access signal flow options and to access effects. Now, Prolog has recently enjoyed a renaissance. You can now buy additional VST content for Prolog, both sounds and loops, from the Steinberg online shop. Next are Mystic and Spectre. They're both really well suited to pads and atmospheric sounds. Mystic is a single oscillator synth that uses feedback and comb filtering to create edgy, resonant effects. A comb filter adds a delayed version of the original signal back onto itself, causing constructive and destructive interference. The frequency response of a comb filter consists of a series of regularly spaced spikes giving the appearance of a comb. Now you can select from a library of filters, and you can customize the comb filter by clicking and dragging over it. Then you have a variety of knobs to control the interaction of the filters and these include some unusual parameters like Morph and Crackle. There are buttons here to access the LFO, Envelope, Event, and FX control.
Spectre has a very similar interface, but Spectre uses spectral filtering, which works off the interplay of frequency and phase between multiple sources. Therefore, Spectre uses a network of six oscillators with a wide range of tuning intervals. Again, you can call up preset shapes, or you can draw the filter curves and the envelope curves manually. The network of filters is controlled in the center area. And Mystic offers a familiar set of buttons to access LFO, Envelope, Event, and Effects. Hellion Sonic SE is a workstation, meaning that you have multi-track capability within the instrument. You can have 16 different sounds on different MIDI channels, all routed to different outputs. You can display it in player mode or open the editor. On the mix tab, you can set levels, panning, and effects. And again, the routing options here depend on the way your audio interface is configured. Now, one thing to note on the MIDI tab, the controller filter is used to select what you want filtered out not the items that you want to turn on. Also, keep in mind that you can't save over the top of factory sounds. If you want to save your edited presets, you have to use a unique name. Halley and Sonic SE has a unique sphere controller. Right-click on the sphere to configure it. You can choose what the X and Y axis assignments are, and you can control whether or not you want the sphere to snap back to center when released. Another cool interface feature are these trigger pads. And again, right click to configure. Halley and Sonic SE comes with its own quick controls above the virtual keyboard. Now they work just like the quick controls in the inspector, only bigger. And again, right click to configure. And this little button bypasses the quick controls. And finally, because of its sophistication, Halley and Sonic SE has its own manual apart from the plugin reference. You can access all of the documents under the Help menu. Loop Mash 2 is a cool instrument, but it's a somewhat baffling instrument. The most common question with Loop Mash is, how do I use it? And I don't mean artistically. Most people are simply asking, how do I actually get the stuff into my project? Now, even though Loop Mash looks like a pattern device, it's really a synth. And that means that you record it by triggering it with a keyboard and capturing those MIDI notes. You cannot record it by clicking on the effects with your mouse. There are basically two different modes of interacting with Loop Mesh, building content and playing content. Now the easiest way to build content is by loading a factory preset. The sliders on the left balance how much of each track is used. The controls on the right set the volume and panning. And the red dot sets your master track. If you want to work with Loop Mash in isolation, disable sync. If you want to hear it play back in time with your project, turn sync back on. And here's a quick tip. Notice that the scene bank has three shades of gray. Now the dark gray slots are empty. The light gray scene is active, but all these others have content in them as well. You can edit your scenes on the loop level or the slice level. To import an entire loop, just drag it into an empty clip. One way to find great loops is Media Bay, VST Sound, 
Loop Mesh Content, then click and drag. If you want to work with material from your project, open the pool, open the audio folder, and drag in what you want. Then you can adjust each slice by right-clicking on it. And use the step controls on the transport to move through slice by slice. The Audio Parameters tab is fairly self-explanatory. The Scene buttons and the Controller buttons are laid out like a keyboard, and this is critical to using Loop Mesh. Now here's a map of how they're laid out across your MIDI controller. This lets you simultaneously play and record scene changes, performance controllers, and transport functions. Two of the most important keys are C and C sharp below middle C. These turn loop mesh on and off. When you look at the performance controllers, the first green button with the 1 8 on it is middle C, and you can work up from there chromatically. Moving the other way, the bottommost octaves on your keyboard are used for changing scenes. So essentially, you have scene control under your left hand and performance controllers under your right hand. Now let's look at Retrolog. The top area has an instrument level control system for monophonic or polyphonic mode, the portamento, octave range, as well as instrument tuning and internal volume. Now Retrolog is a subtractive synth meaning sound starts with the oscillator section and is then subtractively filtered to come up with the final sound. You have two oscillators, a sub-oscillator and noise generators with several waveforms. If you put an oscillator into multi-mode, you can select the number of voices you want. And you also have detune capability which can really help fatten up a sound. Switch back to the other mode to select the different waveforms. The mixer section combines the oscillator output and lets you add a ring modulator. Now, ring modulation involves multiplying two signals by each other. It's called a ring modulator because the diodes used to create it on real instruments formed a ring. The filter section is the heart of any synthesizer, and the two most important parts are the filter type and the cutoff frequency. The abbreviations inside the type window refer to low pass, high pass, and band pass. And the numbers are how many decibels per octave are being cut off. The bigger numbers equate to a more abrupt cutoff. Then the cutoff frequency selector determines where that process starts. Resonance is sound bouncing off of sound. Increasing resonance will increase the amount of ring or whistle that the filter introduces. Now down below you see a standard ADSR envelope, which allows you to set the attack time, decay time, sustain level, and release. But this envelope controls those parameters for the filter. So if you want the big filter sweep effect, use a longer attack time on this filter. If what you want is the volume of the overall sound to fade in over time, set that with the amplifier envelope next door. Retrolog has built-in effects. It also has a built-in low-frequency oscillator to serve as a timing source. You can set up what the LFO controls using the modulation matrix. Set up a source, add a modifier like the LFO, and then pick out a destination or a target parameter.
Finally, we have PadShop, a state-of-the-art granular synthesizer. Granular synthesis lets you shatter a sample into grains, then rearrange them to create amazing sonic textures. The controls at the top are very straightforward. Instrument level stuff like monophonic mode, portamento, pitch bend range, and tuning. To start creating new sounds with Pad Shop, load a sample using this triangle. The controls for all the grain level manipulation are contained within this oval area. The position control, for example, establishes where within the sample playback starts. Your most dramatic changes will come from using the duration, spread, and speed controls. Once you've established the basic sonic structure, you can use the more conventional filter and amplifier controls. And just like Retrolog, there are several built-in effects. At the bottom is a modulation matrix that again allows you to set up controllers and destinations to add motion or changes over time. If you click on the Step tab, you'll open the built-in step sequencer. You can set up the exact number of steps you want along with their sync mode. And programming is as easy as clicking and dragging. You also have several presets available here. If you're interested in truly mastering the somewhat dark art of granular synthesis, check out the Streamworks Audio online shop for an in-depth tutorial series. Now let's move on to the next chapter.